is we're going to talk about soil solarization. We're going to give a little demonstration on soil solarization. Mike McQueen and I, James Miles, uh, regional extension agents for the Alabama Cooperative Extension System uh, in conjunction with uh, Buck Ferrier, the coordinator of Escambia County, uh, have this little demonstration here, demonstration garden. And what we're going to do is we're going to take you through the whole steps. First step is obviously getting the biomass off the beds. And, and uh, you know, we've already kind of gone through here and harvested all of the produce that we could out of this. And now we can actually get in here with our pruners and start cutting stuff out. You'll notice that we have stakes, rope, wine, twine in here supporting these plants. So you got to be a little bit careful about getting through here and try not to make too big of a mess with your twine. There's a significant amount of biomass that we're going to be using to uh, uh, compost. So this will create a lot of uh, good soil amendments for next year. Good lot, uh, good, good amount of biomass to uh, add to our compost pile. Get in here to our root system. We're gonna pull all of our roots out as much as we can, but we wanna leave some of that soil in there. So we'll shake the root system out a little bit, try to get as much of that good stuff as we can. These roots look real good. Um, you know, we don't have any uh, root knot, nematode signs. Look very good. We had a good soil, clean soil to start off with, and we wanna maintain that good clean soil. What we've done now, we've gotten all the vegetative, you know, biomass off of this. The only thing we got to do now is actually get down to the nitty gritty. We don't want a lot. We don't want to start with the problem. So we start seeing some of these little seedling weeds here that could get a head start and start pushing up and poking through our plastic and start causing some holes or even some air pockets in here. We want to try to eliminate that. We want. We don't want to start off like that. So we'll get some of these out of here. We're going to come back in and clean it up a little bit better, but some of these things that <clears throat> can cause us a problem straight from the start, we want to try to eliminate those as best we can. You see we have an irrigation system here. We're going to disconnect it so we get good contact with the soil. We're going to try to reuse as much of the irrigation system as we can next year. So that's the other thing that allows us to do that. It won't get broken down by the heat. Do we've got the irrigation system? You see, we've disconnected the lines. We actually got it out of the way, so we can actually put a crown on this bed. We want to smooth it off, make sure we get good soil contact, but we want a crown so it don't pull, pull water, you know, in certain places. We want it to kind of drain off to the edges and uh, get the most bang for our buck doing that. So Mike and I are going to get in here, and we're actually going to rake it, and smooth it down, and get the crown like we want to not too concerned about a lot of the biomass that's left in here because of leaves and roots and those kind of parts, maybe even a few fruit and bodies. That's going to actually add to a little bit of moisture and a little heat, keep us uh, generating heat as it decomposes, so that's not a bad thing. We've got adequate soil moisture, so we don't have to come in here and do any type of special irrigating during this process. If it was a little bit drier, then we recommend that you either irrigate the day before you do this or immediately after you smooth it off run your irrigation system to get good adequate soil moisture in here. Gotten this bed to the point where we've got a crown on here. You can see it's kind of humped up in the middle here, perfect. And you can already see some of the, the worms and, and, and uh, loopers and all that kind of stuff that's in this bed. And that's fine, we're gonna leave them in here because we're gonna get the, the benefit of them cooking through this process. And again, a lot of the biomass that's left in here we're not too concerned about. But some of this stuff that some of these weeds that still have root system on them can go ahead and peg before we start generating a lot of heat. So we don't want to leave those in there if, if we can. And now we're ready to lay our plastic. We want to make sure that we get all the soil back in the bed. We don't want anything sitting on the side there because we got to get a good seal in this bed. We got our trunk line on our irrigation system, that manifold here that we got kind of kicked off to the side. That's not going to be a problem. So we're ready to go. All right, today we've been talking about soil solarization. We've cleaned out five beds this morning. And this is just half of the biomass 
from these five beds. So you can generate a lot of, you know, biomass that you have got to do something with. And number one thing to do something with it would be composting. And we have compost bins set up nearby, but this will be overwhelming to that little compost bin. So you've got to either plan for a bigger compost bin or you can, don't have to use a bin. You can actually use a pile and actually pile it up. And right now, you've got a good number of green material in here. You've got some solids in here. You've got some brown material in here. So you've got a pretty good mix right now that you can break this down pretty good, but you've got to stay on top of it with turning and moisture and you can actually get it going pretty good. You know, some of these plants are still alive. Some of these plants still got some, uh, some, some um, produce on them. Still good to compost them. You don't have to worry about it. Most of these plants are pretty clean. You don't have any serious pathogen on there. We didn't see any wilt diseases. We didn't see any nematode, you know, uh, uh, signs or anything. So we're still real clean as far as composting, no problem at all. All right, we're at the, one of the final stages of our soil solarization. That's actually laying the plastic. While we're talking about the laying the plastic, the plastic needs to be anywhere from a half a millimeter thick to four millimeters thick. It needs to be clear in order to generate enough heat in this plastic. It needs to be uh, UV uh, resistant as well. You don't want something that's going to break down. And this plastic's got to stay on there anywhere from four, I mean, to uh, from six to eight weeks. So it needs to be able to withstand that sunlight, wind, you know, the occasional bird coming down and sitting on top of it or the dog walking on it or something like that. So you don't want to use real thin stuff. If all you have is real thin type stuff like for drop cloths or something like that, double that stuff and then use two layers on there and you can get good coverage like that. And make it easy on yourself. You know, we got two guys here. This is a pretty good size roll. You know, lay it down. Don't try to, somebody try to hold it and roll it and do all that stuff. Just lay it on the bed and then we'll just roll it on out. You know, two people can do this. Sometime on a windy day, you might have to delay your plans, you know, a day or so. We'll stop right there for just a second, and then we'll put our put something down here so it won't blow away. You lay that shovel down on top of it there, Mike. There you go. And then we'll come on down here to the end, overlap a little bit. Try not to uh, put holes in it. We don't want any holes in it, so you know, make sure you don't have any, you know, bad nails, anything like that, or anything poking up on this wood. So we got, got to get a good seal. So we'll leave the roll attached. We'll come with our shovels and put some soil around it. Looks like the wind is trying to come from this direction, so we'll hit that end first. So we'll be working it with the wind. Soil we're using is coming from the outside of the bed. It's going to go right back out of the bed. So we finish uh, with this in about eight weeks or so. So we're not too concerned about you know how clean it is. We just want it to hold this plastic down and get a good seal for us. You can see what I mean by this wind it's kind of we had to fight it a little bit. It wants to get up under this plastic, so you you know take a little time and uh, make sure you you know use the wind as best you can and don't fight it as much as you can. Now we got the windy side done and we'll go up our edge. Alright folks, this is what our finished product is going to look like. We want to get good soil contact with the plastic. You can see it's right here under the plastic. You can see we're getting some uh, steam build up already. We're getting some condensation up under here, which is what we want. We got our soil packed up against these uh, timbers real good. And uh, this is our finished product. We're going to leave it there for about, like I said, six to eight weeks. And then we'll come back, get ready to clean this off, take this soil from outside the bed, put it back outside the bed. We don't want to get that soil in here because it could be contaminated with weed seeds, um, you know, pathogen, insects, whatever can be in this. So we want to put it outside our bed. And you can refer to our publication uh, a 1213 for any more information you have, you want on this. But this is soil solarization in a nutshell. We got all of my five beds done. The toughest of the five was this big bed right here where we actually had to go in and had to double our plastic. And if you have a bed that doesn't necessarily fit your roll, it's not a big deal. You just got to be a little bit creative. Luckily for us, this is a, a square bed. So even though it didn't fit our roll, we was able to put a trench right down the middle, lay one side, throw the soil on it, and then come back and lay the other side, stuff it up under the plastic, and then smooth the soil out. So actually you only see one 
flap here, and that's from this side, which we did first. The other side is actually tucked up under here pretty good. Went on around and did complete seal. So for the most part, we're a done deal. If you get concerned about it, you might want to come back, take yourself a staple gun, and just kind of tack in a few areas to keep that wind from actually getting up under here on real windy days and probably moving some of the soil that we put on top of here. If it makes you feel better, you can actually get a little bit even more creative and put, you know, uh, one by twos or something on there and then tack them down. But that's up to you. But I think for today, we're a done deal. It's getting a little hot out here. We started about 8 o'clock this morning, and I don't know if you can see it, but we're starting to get a little uh, moist. And that's not from uh, from uh, lack of work, I promise you. But uh, this is pretty much it. We got five bets done in a couple hours' time.